I took this graph from question 65 of chapter 2 in your textbook. However, I've modified slightly to show you the full process that we use to relate your position versus time graph, your velocity versus time graph, and your acceleration versus time graph. The three graphs are interrelated and there are ways to generate the other two graphs as long as you've given one of them and probably some initial condition kind of like these. Quick reminder, to go from position to velocity, what you do is you find the slope because the slope of the position for the time graph, delta x over delta t, is in fact our velocity. Likewise, the acceleration is delta v over delta t, so that's also the slope. So to move down these steps, we just find slope for any given pi. Conversely, to go backwards, we rearrange this and we find that delta x is equal to v times delta t. So in that sense, the change in x, not x itself, but the change in x through any given time, so say I have v up here and delta t like that, whatever is underneath in this area, because it's v times delta t, this rectangular area, that will give me my delta x in this interval. So what it works out to be is the area under the curve. Now of course if the curve keeps changing, then we'll need calculus, but I've chosen an example where everything is straight line and nicely geometrical shape. Likewise, delta v is equal to a delta t, so that's also area under the curve. So that's basically how you relate the three of them. Let's apply that to this situation and you'll see how it goes. For this case, we start with the velocity versus time graph. So for one graph, we have to go downwards, the acceleration, so we have to take the slope. For the other way, we have to do the area and the curve to get the position. Usually the easier one to do is the slope one. So let's start with that one. We have quick sketch, time in second, and then a in meters per second square. This is quite simple because we have two different sections, right? This section and this section, each of constant slope. In fact, the second part is super easy. There's your four second. And there's your 10 seconds. And in between, it's a horizontal line. Horizontal line, as you know, has zero slope. So that's easy. It's zero all the way through. For the first four seconds, we have to do A is equal to delta V over delta T, picking two points on the line to get the slope. I'm gonna pick this and this point. You can pick the zero point, but whatever. We have 12 meters per second minus what looks like six meters per second at four seconds and two seconds respectively. So we have six meters per second over two seconds, giving us three meters per second square. So there's my three, and for the first four seconds, it's all that. Pretty easy, I hope. Then we move on to my position versus time graph, where we've been told that t equals zero, the position is at negative 10 meters. But before we can plot it, sensibly, we kind of have to know how big the numbers get to choose the correct scale. So then we have to go and find our change in x's between all these different points. Again, we're going to divide up the graph into this four second mark because the behavior is different between when it's accelerating and when it's at constant speed. So we'll deal with each part separately. The change in x from 0 to 4 seconds is given by the area under the curve between 0 and 4 seconds, so that part. It's a triangle, so we can use geometry to find out that it's 1 half times the height, which is 12 meters per second, times the base, which is 4 seconds. That cancels out. And with the 1 half, we get 24 meters. That's your change in your position. To get the actual position at four seconds, it's the initial position plus the change. So 
So that's going to be negative 10 meters plus 24 meters, giving us 40 meters. Okay, so far so good. Numbers aren't terribly big yet. So let's do it for the change in x from 4 to 10 seconds. Well, there, the area we're talking about is this area between 4 and 10 seconds. Now, that's a rectangle because velocity is constant. So that's just length times width. And this time is, of course, 10 minus 4. Not 10, not 4, but the change in time. So there you go, 6 seconds, giving us 72 meters. It's pretty big. So from 4 seconds, we add on another 72 meters. So from 14, we end up 72, we end up with 86 meters. So let's call 86 way up here. And so 10th would be about a ninth of that, which is like smallish here. Quite small, we have your 14. Again, this is a rough sketch, so nothing too much to worry about. But here, we do want to represent some qualitative stuff fairly well. We know that in the second part, velocity is constant. That means the slope is constant between these points. So we have a straight line. For the part when it's accelerating, it's important to note that at the beginning, my slope is actually zero. So here we have basically flat slope. And then at the very end, it's at the same speed as the constant velocity section. So this part just before four must have the same slope as the rest of it from four to 10 seconds. And then you join it up in the curvy ways because it gradually speeds up to that point. And then it continues on with a straight line. So there you go. Taking the slope to go from position to velocity and to acceleration and take the area under the curve to go from acceleration to velocity and to a position finally, giving us the change each time. So we add on whatever is missing. Not to beat a dead horse, but our 72 is here. It's from the four to the 10, and then from zero second to four seconds, that's where the 24 came in. These are changes, these aren't the actual positions.